Good morning and welcome to Life Moments, a podcast designed to inform, to inspire, and to motivate. I'm Terry Beckstrom, your host, and we're back on the air. We've been off for a while, a lot of stuff going on, but I hope you've missed this. I thought this would be a good time to start the podcast back, and I hope that wherever you are, that you're doing well. Here's what I want to talk about today. I kind of want to interview myself, or I could bring in a number of other people to interview me. I thought you might want to hear about my new book that just published. The book is called First Impressions, if you haven't heard of it. I think I've talked about it before, but it finally published. It's called First Impressions, The Art and Practice of Making a Profoundly Positive First Impression. How about you? Do you do that? When you meet new people, do you make a great first impression? I hope you do. And if you don't, the book is full of techniques and ideas to help you in that very category. So, I hope you buy the book. Actually, I hope you buy a lot of the books. I think that it would be appropriate for you to buy copies of First Impressions for everyone in your household. If you're a parent, for you to buy a copy for your kids. If you're a wife, for you to buy a copy for your husband. If you're a husband, to buy a copy for your wife. Buy a copy for your mom, for your dad, for your aunts, for your uncles, for your cousins, first cousins, second cousins, even third cousins. And of course, you have to buy copies for your friends. They are, in fact, your friends, so show your friendship to your friends by buying them copies of First Impression. What better way to show your loyalty to them by getting them a copy of the book? You know, if you're in business, the book is going to help you. If you are somebody who is going to be interviewing for a job, the book is going to help you tremendously. If you are a business owner, if you work in the service industry, or if you work in customer service, or if you deal with humans, the book is going to help you. I'll talk about some of the chapters today. Let's get started. I'm glad you're back. Today is a new day. It's the 20th of June, by the way. It's hard to believe, is it? We are halfway through 2019, and I'm probably still stuck in 2016. I don't know what's going on with this whole time thing, but it's going by really fast. If you have kids, you realize how quickly they grow up. My 21-year-old is back at the house with us for a little bit, and I have so enjoyed having him around. He had his tonsils removed the other day at 21, and I can tell you that was not a pleasant experience, or at least the after effects. Our house flooded the other day. Uh, We've had a lot going on. Had about a thousand gallons of water pour onto our first floor, and so everything is missing downstairs in the house. So, you know, you roll with the punches. It is what it is, and you keep moving on. So let's talk about this book thing, First Impressions. You know, I started writing the book, First Impressions, probably about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And the reason that I wrote the book is because I feel like most people, or a large percentage of our population, they make some serious or critical errors, if you will, when they first meet people. It's the simple things that you don't think about. But as you know, I've been into body language, people reading for a long time, 30 years now. I've written another book on body language called Spoken Silently. If you don't have a copy of that book, you have to get one. It's very detailed, and it's a comprehensive look at body language and why it's important. But body language is so important. You know, it's probably as important as your ability to speak and to read. Because about you know, anywhere from 70 to about 90% of our communication abilities comes from body language. And most of the time, the signals are sent subconsciously and they are received subconsciously. But you get what's going on. You understand it. Now, for a large majority, people get it. They understand it. They're reading the signals, but they really don't know a lot of times what it is they're reading. Or they have an elementary understanding of what it is they're reading. And what I do in Spoken Silently is I go through in great detail and give you what you need to be able to read the signals, to help you to interpret the signals that you're receiving from others, and then conversely to be able to send appropriate responses back 
to the people you're interacting with. And these responses can help you in everyday life. Uh, they can help you in just about any aspect of your life to understand people better, to communicate uh, better with them, uh, to understand their emotions, to be more empathetic. There is so much in that book about reading people, and that makes a great precursor to first impressions. It kind of lays the foundation for understanding body language, but what First Impressions does, the book that just published, is it deals specifically with our ability to interact with others, to encounter people on a positive level. You know, no matter where I go, no matter where I've been in my life, I see that probably most people, in my humble opinion, don't get it. They don't realize that little things like looking away when you're first meeting someone, even if it's a glancing at someone who's walking by, you see a vehicle perhaps going by that you like, or see someone that you think you recognize, or a critical error would be looking down at your watch. Little things like that cause an emotional disconnect, and those emotional disconnects can have a lasting effect on people. But one of the things that I always talk about when we deal with first impressions is there's this thing called the primacy effect. The primacy effect is very simple. When you first meet someone, before really the first words are ever spoken, people sum you, sum you up. They decide whether they like you or they dislike you. They may decide a number of things right there in the first few seconds of encountering someone. Those things primarily are trustworthiness, likability, if they are romantically interested in you or you just don't matter to them. We are categorized almost instantaneously with the people that we meet. And what's so cool about that is that we have the power to do subtle things that make a huge difference when you're first meeting people. And I talk about that in the book in great detail. I talk about what you can do to make sure when you first meet someone that you don't derail the conversation or that you don't do something that is going to take you off track and cause that person either not to like you, not to respect you, not to trust you. And those lasting effects, the primacy effect we talked about, those last a lifetime. They cause a mental marker of sorts to be put away in the database of your mind. And you will forever remember those first impressions that you had of that person that you met for the rest of your life when you encounter that person again. So when you meet, let's say you meet someone and that person gives off some bad vibes vibes to you, you just didn't feel right, something wasn't right, and you walked away and you said, you know what, I don't really like that person. So you go away and a year passes and you bump into this same person out on the street somewhere, you may be in a mall, you may be any number of places and you see that person, the first thing that pops in your mind is what you thought of that person when you first met them, that first occasion, that will revisit your mind and you will be reminded of what you thought of that person when you first met him. And if those thoughts were poor, your mind is gonna tell you, hey, by the way, we don't like this guy. And on the other side of the spectrum, if they like you, they're gonna beam with a big smile and say, hey, great to see you. You know what, your mind is gonna be telling you you really like this person. The difference out there is when you do the things right, when you're first meeting someone, you want to establish trust immediately. You want to establish likability. And a lot of people like to jokingly say that, oh, I don't care if that person doesn't like me or not. I don't care if someone doesn't like me. That's a good cliche thing to say, and it may sound tough. It may sound cool. You may impress certain friends when you say that because they think, oh, yeah, this person's just got their own thing going. They don't really need any friends. They don't need people like them. Well, actually, yes, you do. I hate to burst your bubble, but your mind wants you to be liked. We all want to be liked. And there are people that have been hurt in life. There are people that have had things that have caused them to mistrust people. There are people that, for whatever reason, have some bad attitudes uh, towards other people. And sometimes those attitudes carry to the general public. I know people who have been hurt in divorce situations who are forever tainted. Uh, and almost every conversation that you may have with that person, the negative vibes come out. They've been hurt by someone or they've been hurt by some experience in their life. And it carries on through their life because they can't let it go. And those things make a very bold appearance in first impressions. 
and people who come off as people who are negative, as people who are looking to complain or who are looking to find fault with people, they're not thought of so well. And so we're not just in the book talking about nonverbal signals, but we're also talking about the verbal signals, what it is you say, how it is you present yourself, the things you talk about, which when you're meeting someone new, the things you should talk about most are the other person. Because guess what? People like to talk about themselves. It's okay. We all like to talk about ourselves. But if you're going to be an epic people person, you're going to have to concentrate on the other person you're talking to. You're going to have to basically turn the spotlight to the other person. And you have to shine it on them. You're going to have to leave the light on them. And you're going to want to talk about the other person. You're going to want to talk about their life, what they're about, where they're from, everything you ever wanted to know about somebody. Usually if you ask, they'll tell you. So we talk about things in the book that really help you to develop that rapport with people that allows you to be established as someone that's trustworthy, that is likable. I'm looking at the table of contents in the book. The first chapter is why first impressions matter. What I try and do in the first chapter is just to explain to you why first impressions are so important. And if you've never really thought about that, if you've never really thought about, well, when you first meet someone, they either like you or they don't like you, or if you've never really thought about what you can do to change to make your appearance, and I'm not talking about your physical appearance necessarily, although in the book we talk about that, but your appearance or the way you are perceived by the other person, if you haven't thought about that as being important, and it's probably a good time to do so. You know, I think about businesses that I go into, and everybody probably listening to this podcast works. Some of you are retired, but for those of you who work, you probably encounter people, whether that is the boss, whether that is employees that you work with, whether it's co-workers, whether it is customers. And everything that you do sends signals to the other person. And the way you react, the way you encounter someone, I can't believe how often I go into a business and I was one at one the other day, and it was a big box business. If I mentioned the name, you'd all know it. And I walked in there, and I, I passed employee after employee who all had on their uniforms, quite identifiable, and not one of them spoke to me. Now, if you looked at their faces, you'd say, well, they probably aren't too happy to be at this place of business. But they were making a salary, and they were being paid to be customer friendly. Well, I think I passed about 10 before the first person ever spoke to me. Now, when you're in the business of customer service or you're in the business of sales, whether that's at, you know, at a big box store, whether it is uh, at a law office, whether it is anything where you take money in from people, where your business depends on people coming into your business or buying from your business, then you need to be aware of how it is you come across in those first impressions. And I'm going to tell you this, if you've never thought about this, but this is absolutely true, probably 50% of the business that most businesses could have is lost just about every day on people who work for them who are giving off bad vibes. And I don't care if it is a car dealership and you walk in there and somebody comes up to you and they say, hey, you want to buy this car and all of a sudden you start getting those bad vibes, they're doing something, whether it's showing arrogance, whether it's showing the fact that you might not be trustworthy, that you give off the appearance of not being trustworthy. So much takes place where people immediately be turned off dealing with you. And that applies to every business. And I don't care if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you're a school teacher, if you're a school bus driver, if you're a real estate agent, if you work at any type of business where you interact with customers you need to read this book. You need to understand the critical nature of first impressions. Chapter number two is the psychology of first impressions. We talk about the human psyche and why it is that first impressions matter so much and the psychology behind what takes place in our minds when we first meet someone. Chapter three, reading body language, we go through uh, kind of a mini tutorial on body language and why it's so important. We talk about your projection, In chapter four, we talk about the facial code, the 
descriptives, the readings of the facial code, the facial feedback that takes place, and the signals that take place from the face. The face basically is 55% of your nonverbal communication comes from facial expression, so you need to be quite aware of that. You know, we talk about the handshake. The handshake, to me, is one of the most important things that we can ever do in interacting with people. And the quick and easy answer to that is, for me and for most people, the handshake will give someone an indication of a person's very character. And that is what's so cool about a handshake. If you give that limp noodle handshake, your character is gonna come across as weak. If you give a tight handshake where you're trying to squeeze the person, you're gonna come across as domineering. The way you position your hand, the way you turn your hand, the way you move your hand, they all send signals. Handshakes are very important. We talk about that in the book. We talk about your gestures, how to read the gestures. We talk about your posture. We talk about proxemics, which is spatial awareness. There are a lot of people who burst space bubbles, who walk into people's personal space, and they don't even realize it, but they burst into someone's personal space, and they are not welcome there. And what I talk about in the book is how you can know when you have infringed on someone else's personal space and what you can do to make sure that you maintain a distance that's comfortable for the other person. Not you, but the other person. We talk about listening. We talk about developing rapport, which is so important. And there's so many techniques in the book that I talk about that you can use to develop instantaneous rapport. Some of them are so cool, so easily implemented, but so few people actually know what to do. I'm going to tell you how to do this. Uh, we talk about power of smiles. We talk about conversations, how to start a conversation, what you need to talk about. So many people, so many people get it wrong when we're talking about conversations. So many people like to talk about themselves, which is the opposite of what you need to do to develop rapport and to become unforgettable and a good people person. It's hard for some people to conceptualize this, but I'm telling you, there's so many people and they are professional, well-educated people. And you meet with these folks and all they want to talk about is themselves. And you walk away and you say, man, you know what? I don't care if I ever see that person again. We don't like braggers. We do not like people who brag. So we talk about that. We talk about positivity. We talk about you know, authenticity. Um, we talk about job interviews. Boy, if you are someone or you know someone who is trying to get a job or who wants a better job, you have to read chapter 16 in the book. Chapter 16 is on job interviews. And I talk to you about what you can do in a job interview to make an impactful and profound impression on the people you're interviewing with. You know, I've sat through probably a couple hundred interviews uh, with the agency that I used to work for, and I'm keenly aware of what works and what doesn't work. And I can tell you that probably 60 to 70 percent of the people that we interviewed did not get it right. Uh, one of the things I do as well is I do private coaching. And I had someone come up to me, a prominent citizen, came up to me and said, hey, I want you to help my son because he is not good with people and he's got a big job interview coming up. There are things you can do that are easily implemented that people just don't get. If you're someone who's seeking a job, you need to read this book. We talk about presentations and public speaking, which I love to do. A lot of people who do this are making some errors that really make them come across as unappealing. We talk about um, first impressions in photography. Have you, ever, have you ever thought about really the fact that when you post pictures of yourself, that you're sending messages through the body language that is read on your facial expressions, your posture, everything, and that people form opinions of you based on the photograph that you posted. I know a lot of you are into social media. We have a chapter that deals with social media. You need to read that chapter. If you have kids, you need to give them this book and say, read this before you do something damaging that is going to carry with you for your entire life from some posting that you put on social media. We talk about personalities. You want to be in the attractive personality category. We also talk about clothing, color psychology, and adornments, talking about tattoos, uh, things that you wear, clothing, how clothing affects um, what people think of you, how the colors you wear affect what people think about you. We talk about cultural considerations, how to know what to do and what not to do in certain cultures. Awareness is key in that category. 
We talk about networking. People who are in business, they know about that word networking. It's important, and you need to read the chapter on networking. We talk about telephonic first impressions. Do you know that when you talk on the telephone that you are sending signals to people just the way that you talk, the inflection in your voice, whether you're smiling or not, they all have impact. They have a profound impact on the people on the other end of the line, and they form opinions of you based on this. You need to read that. We talk about, for a little bit, first impressions of the romantic kind. If you are someone who is seeking the company of someone of the opposite sex and you are interested in that person, then you probably should read this little bit of chapter. Now, I am not one to say that I am some expert in this category, but I've got some things in there about first impressions and body language that you probably would like. And then I also talk about raising kids who make great first impressions. Sometimes I'm appalled. As a parent, when I go out and I am introduced to kids and I realize right off the bat they have been taught poor manners or no manners and they are doing things that are really causing people to find them, how you say, unappealing, some detestable. So if you have kids, you need to read this book. You want to read and understand what you can do to make your kids a little more appealing, if you will. And that's probably not a good word, but you know what I'm saying. Make your kids more acceptable to the general public. Things that they can do. Manners are a huge, huge thing. And the funny thing about children, if you raise them to have great manners and to do a lot of the techniques that we talk about in the book, then when they become adults, they're going to have a much easier time getting a job, getting along with people, making friends. You know, this goes to every aspect of life. It goes to your enjoyment. It goes to your ability to form friendships. It goes to your ability to be persuasive, to negotiate, uh, to be able to deal with conflict. Body language, first impressions, they matter. I really do hope you go out and get the book. I want to welcome you back to Life Moments. I hope that you have enjoyed this short time we've had together. And I do hope you come back next week. We're going to bring back some guests that I think you'll like. We're back on the air, and I want to tell you how much I appreciate you, and I want to encourage you to make an effort to make great first impressions. I don't care what it is you do. If you're a janitor, if you're a lawn maintenance guy, everyone needs to understand the importance of making great first impressions so that when you meet people, when you encounter people, that they walk away from you and say, you know what, that's a great guy, or that's a great gal. I really enjoyed meeting them. It's amazing the impact that you can make when you know and you have the tools to make the impact. I appreciate you joining me today. And I hope that you have a great weekend. I hope that you have a great Friday and that you have a great weekend and that you stay safe. And I look forward to talking to you next week. Until next week. <laughs>